Hello everybody, welcome to our All Age Worship today. I'm Mike. And I'm Alison. It's lovely to see you. Today we are going to be thinking about seeing something new. And in our Bible story, three of Jesus' special friends saw something new about Jesus. And today we've got lots of helpers. We'll be seeing Anne-Marie and Bessie, who'll be showing us some craft that we could do. Maggie and Paddy and Ian are going to be doing our prayers. Benjamin and Albert are going to be doing the Bible reading. And Matt, our curate, is going to talk about something with Mike. He's going to be talking about seeing things in a new way, mm -hmm. I think. Well, we're going to just have a prayer and then we're going to worship together. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that all of us would be able to see you and that you'd lead us forward and you would be our vision. Amen. Amen. Okay. One, two, one, two, three, four. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Hello. 
Today, we're going to do a craft based around things appearing. What do we need for the craft, Bessie? So you need a piece of paper, a paintbrush, and some paint. So you could just get some, some coloured paint and just pour it and just, then just put... We've some made some really water. watery paint. Yeah. We've also got a candle. Now this is what we've written our secret surprise messages with. So on these bits of paper, Bessie and I have written messages. Can you see any messages? No. So what we're going to do, we've written them with our white candle on the paper. So we've used them to write. I know it just flashed a little bit, didn't it? But it's mainly invisible. You can't see it, can you? And then we're going to get our watery, our really watery paint. Let's see what I've written. Anything appearing? Oh, it looks like an air there. You know, I've forgotten what I've written. Just do it really quickly. And you could do this, if you don't have a candle, you could also use some PVA glue, which you could paint on your paper and let it dry. I've done that in the past and it's worked really well. But this is a way that you can have secret messages. So mine's finished, I'm gonna let Bessie do hers. So can anyone see what mine says now? says Jesus. Oh, I can see a la. Should I help you? Yeah. It's, you need to try and when you're writing it with your candle, you need to do it quite hard, otherwise it might not show up. Oh, I can see an it. La e. What have you written, Bessie? Girl? Is that a girl? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. We should have swapped and done each other's. Maybe you could do this at home with somebody else and you could swap and do each other's. Or you could sort of hide secret messages and say. So Bessie's written light. Because Jesus was the light of the world. And I've written Jesus. And we've also done, a, here's one we made earlier, love. which says love. So that's some secret messages. Some of the other crafts that we've suggested you might like to do in our craft pack today. There's this, do you want to talk about this? It's so, um, Jesus is always friends with us and we've got a heart in the middle because he loves us forever. And there are some activities about the story of Jesus on the mountain, the transfiguration. Yep. There's some this lovely colouring that Bessie's done. And then there's a dot to dot and you can colour it in. And then there's a few jokes. Do you want to tell us a joke? Or oh, one of the jokes. This is a quite a good one. John, Oscar, Hannah and Daniel were friends. How many A's in their name? Uh, John, Oscar, one... Hannah, Daniel, four. Only one. Their names. Their <sighs> names. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. We think of all those who do not have access to clean water, and we are thankful for the charities who are helping them. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for the food we eat and farmers who grow it. We thank all those who do not have enough food to eat or to hear our prayer. Now we're going to sing a song called Jesus' Love is Very Wonderful. Well, today is St. Valentine's Day. When we think about love, and love is one of those things that we feel but we can't see. And we know that the people 
who love us, our families, our friends. We know that that love is real, but we can't see it. And Jesus' love is real, even though we can't see it. So we're going to sing, Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. And remember, you need to do some actions for this. We need you all to join again, getting some exercise. We need exercise in lockdown, don't we? Mm, yeah. We need to keep ourselves fit. So there's some stretching up like this. And there's some getting down low. And there's some stretching out wide. Right, so everyone, you know, get up out of your seats if you can and join in with us. Here we go. <clears throat> Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. It's so high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. And again. Jesus' love. Benjamin and Albert Hobbs. The true story of Jesus. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him. They went up on a high mountain where they could be alone. There in front of the disciples, Jesus was completely changed and his clothes became much whiter than any bleach on earth could make them. Then Moses and Elijah were talking of Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Teacher, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three shelters, shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But Peter and the others were terribly frightened, and he did not know what he was talking about. The shadow of a cloud passed over and covered them. From the day's cloud, a Roy said, this is my son and I love him. Listen to what he says. At once the disciples looked around but they saw only Jesus. As Jesus and his disciples were coming down the mountain, he told him to not say a word about the, what they had seen until the Son of Man had been raised from death. Bye. Bye. Well, thank you, Benjamin and Albert. That was brilliant reading. Well done. It's a lovely story. Very interesting story, that, because the friends of Jesus, Peter, James and John, saw something about Jesus that they'd never seen before. In uh, the craft time, do you remember... Anne Marie and Bessie did that lovely picture that they did and they had a sort of secret message, a secret picture and they couldn't see it until it was painted over and then you could see something different. Have you ever looked at any of those magic eye pictures which just look like a jumble of colours and then those, as you look at them carefully all of a sudden you can see something new. Very interesting. What helps you see? When you can't see very well, what helps you see? Yeah, I need these. I need these when I'm watching television and I need them when I'm looking out of the window and I need them when I'm driving because I can't see things far away very well. Mike needs glasses for looking at things close to because he can't see to read a book. Um, very well. And so glasses are very useful because they help you to see more clearly. Um, 
what other things can you think of? What about this? What's that for? It's for helping you to see something close to something that you can't see very well. Perhaps if you've had a, a thorn or something like that in your fingers and then if you have a really good look you can see where it is and if you have a little creature like a, a ladybird or something like that if you get a magnifying glass you can see it really clearly and that's a really useful thing to help you to see. What about this? What are these for? would help if you put them the right way round. Is that right? They help you to see, don't they? They help you to see things that are a long way away. I can remember once um, my next door neighbour coming round and he's got one of these, what do you call those? This is only a cardboard tube of course but you can pretend it's like a telescope and he's got a real telescope and he said Alison come round and look at this and he had got his telescope trained up onto the sky and it was dark and I looked in his telescope and I saw Saturn with its rings oh it gave me a funny feeling because I'd never ever seen that before I'd looked up at the sky and I'd seen the stars and the planets but I'd never seen the rings on Saturn before. That was fantastic. They're all ways of seeing something new. And I haven't got one of these at home, but what about the things that help you see things that are really, really tiny, too small for a magnifying glass? A microscope. Those help you to see things that are really, really tiny, like little tiny grains of pollen or the cells inside your blood, those sort of things. They're all things that you can't see with your ordinary eyes, but these instruments help you to see them. And today, in our Bible story, the three friends that went with Jesus up the mountain, they saw something new about Jesus. It wasn't something that they could see just with their eyes. It was something that they saw as well with their hearts and their understanding. They began to see that Jesus wasn't just a good person, that, that Jesus wasn't just somebody who cared about other people. He wasn't just someone who healed people or who told lovely stories, they saw that he was someone who had God inside him, that he was full of the glory of God. And that made them really think. Of course, at the end, they just realized he was just the same Jesus anyway, but now they knew him better. So I wonder what, what do you think? What do you think about Jesus? Do you think he's just a good person? He was just a good person who lived a long time ago? Do you think he was just somebody in the history books that uh, has nothing to do with today? Do you think he was a holy person, like a saint or a very good person? In our Bible study group that I go to sometimes, we've been looking at some books in the New Testament and one of those that we looked at a couple of weeks ago said that, that Jesus was God living with us, that Jesus had God in him. And this was something that we could all find out about. That's not just being a good person, that's being something different, something new. And Lent, which starts on Wednesday, in fact, is a good time to think about these things and to think about what we really think about Jesus. We could 
find out some more about him. We could read some of the Bible or some Bible stories. We could find out more about him. In the Bible, we find out about God's story. We could also learn more about him by talking to him. That's how you get to know people, isn't it? And talking to God is praying. And Numa are, d are doing a, a course that we could all join in, learning to pray more. But it's all about getting to know him better, or seeing something new in him that will make a difference to us. And in a minute, Mike is going to talk to Matt about something that he saw new in Jesus. Well, hi again, everybody, and we're welcoming now a Matt. Um, hi, Matt. Hi, uh, good to see you. Matt, Matt is our curate in the Woodbridge Group of Churches. Uh, that means he's learning to be a vicar. And Matt lives in Malmesbury with somebody else he's got there. Who is this it, Matt? This little lad called Ziggy. Say hello, Ziggy. Ziggy. Ziggy, hello, Ziggy. What sort of dog is Ziggy? He is a Labrador crossed with a Springer. Wow, wow. Yeah. He's is ready he for the energy. Handful? Oh yeah, he's only six months old, so he's got he's got a lot of energy. Um yeah. lots of walks, lots of play. Lots of Does yeah. he eat loads of things? He's not too bad actually. He's mm. not too bad. He mm. um every now and then something disappears that, that yeah. gets found later, chewed up in a corner somewhere. But uh but not too often. He could be a lot worse at that. Well, that's great, great. Uh, one man and his dog. That's lovely, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Great, okay. Well, Matt's been with us since last summer and he'll be with us for about another year yet. So it's great having Matt with us um, in our group of churches. Matt's only half the age that I am. Um, so he, he brings lots of energy, lots of fun to our life together as churches. And you're enjoying it here, here Matt, aren't you, with us? Oh yeah, I'm having a great time. Yeah, really yeah. fun. I can't um, wait till lockdown's over when I can meet people properly and a bit more yeah, and we yeah. can be together more. But uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. OK, well, it's great to have you. Uh, we're thinking today in our, our uh, all age worship just about when Jesus friends saw him sort of shining on, on the top of the mountain there and they sort of saw something new about him and saw him in a new way. So uh, when did you uh, first come to learn about Jesus uh, Matt or have you seen him uh, as it were all of your life well yeah I um, my dad my dad was also a vicar so I grew up going to church um, regularly and Sunday school and all of that kind of thing so um, for as long as I can remember I have felt like I've known about Jesus and uh, you know, been familiar with the stories and the Bible from a really young age. Uh, yeah, so I've always heard, of, I've always learned, been learning about Jesus, I guess, um, from a really young age. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and was there a time when that became more real for you, when you got a bit older, perhaps? Yeah, I think as I grew up, I, I became, um, I became quite involved in, uh, human rights which is kind of I guess looking out for the poorest in society and I started working um, in jobs that were aimed at kind of uh, helping people out I was working with homeless people and um, and such like and um, I really I really through doing that work and through continuing to be a Christian I really um, I really found Jesus to be someone who cared for the poor and who was an activist for the poor and who did things to help and feed and support those who have less. And Jesus has got a real special heart and place in his kingdom for those who have, have less things and have less money and stuff. And I found that a real transformative, a real changing moment actually um, in kind of this kind of putting the pieces together and realizing that Jesus was existing for 
mm. um, for these people who are often left out and stuff. And uh, that certainly I felt like I was started to see Jesus anew and afresh um, through that realisation. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant, Matt. That's brilliant. Because sometimes, you know, we, we can have a faith and it goes back right a long way, but perhaps we can't really speak about Jesus now, you know, and what Jesus is showing us as we go on through our lives. And, and so that's great. Thank you. And then a little bit more recently, I think I met you when I was at Trinity College training to be a vicar in my old age. And um, you were there too, uh, a year or two below me, and, and uh, you were training to be a vicar. So what was it that brought that about, really? How did you decide that? Was Jesus showing you something new about yourself there and himself and, and, and leading you on? Talk to us about that a bit. Yeah, I think um, having grown up in a vicarage and my dad being a vicar, I obviously thought that was the least cool thing to go and do ever in the world. And it didn't really occur to me. Um, and maybe it, I didn't think that I was the kind of person that God was calling to be a vicar. Um, I don't know. It just wasn't it wasn't a part of how I understood myself, really. But more and more I was working for churches and I was um, involved in homeless work and um, that kind of thing. And, um, and more and more I just felt Jesus calling me to follow him more deeply and more fully. And um, and Jesus saying, yeah, I'm the one who um, who cares for the poor, but I care for everyone else, too. And I want you to be a part of that part of that journey to um to come with me in that in that you know feeding people looking after mm. people um mm. comforting people um mm. yeah and something about um being called to be a part of the intimate moments of people's lives so you know weddings and baptisms mm. and f funerals um yeah uh so yeah, I think those are the real things that uh, were speaking to me during that time um, of the call to ordination. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks, Matt. And you, you, you went through that and uh, you were ordained uh, and now you're with us. And uh, sadly, you'll be leaving us at some point and, and going on to whatever God is showing you uh, about himself uh, next. And uh, God speaks to all of us, doesn't he? Uh, all of us watching today. And I wonder what God is saying to you, uh, showing you uh, about himself. And uh, we need to ask him to show us that and to lead us all on in our faith and our walk with him. So, Matt, thanks a lot. Uh, can we say goodbye to Ziggy as well? Oh, no, he's, he's wandered off somewhere. Um, oh, but I'm God. sure he says, I'm sure he sends his love. Um, Never mind. <laughs> We can all cry, we can all call out. Bye bye, Ziggy. <laughs> bye bye, Matt. Thanks a lot for talking to us today, and God bless. Thanks for having me.
that Jesus will open the eyes of all our hearts to see him in a new way. Well thank you for joining us today, thank you to everyone who's taken part and now let's just say the grace together as we finish. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Goodbye.
me his favor 